This video is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. Mike Irwin from Pig Trail Nation for the first time in a couple of weeks. Missed you last week, Mike. You feeling better? You doing all right? Yeah, I was just sick that last, that one Monday. I'm all right now. My wife made some stuff I ate Sunday night that didn't agree with me. <laughs> she kept some of it and ate it again, said, eh, it didn't affect me. And I'm going, you're not getting me to eat that stuff. Got to do something so. about that weak stomach at that moment then, man. What did you think about That's the right. Super Bowl yesterday? Uh, I'm ready to uh, ready to have a coronation for Patrick Mahomes. Two Super Bowl championships already. What is it, five years into his career? Well, it's five straight AFC championship games, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. It's amazing. It really is amazing. I'm, t- I'm trying to figure out if he rope-a-doped him right before half. I don't think he did, but I had somebody tell me oh, he wasn't hurt that bad, and he knew it, but he wanted – you know, the Eagles to go into that locker room thinking, oh, he may not even play. <laughs> and they relaxed. They dom- dominated the first half anyway. And then I don't know what went on in that Kansas City locker room, but they came out like a house on fire in the second half. And that was the difference in the game. I was going to ask Matt, like, how long does it take for a cortisone shot to set in? Because I would imagine there was something getting injected into that ankle. He he, he probably did get shot up. I mean, it, it, it happens. But, yeah, he, hey, he was in pain. I, you know those those high ankle sprains when you get rolled up. It's the only thing. The best thing is rest. If you're not resting, it's, it's getting it's, – it's hurting. Uh, Mike, what was your – what was kind of your turning point that, that you thought when, when Kansas City kind of made the move and, and you could tell that they were going to uh, have a chance to win this game? Because Philly kind of dominated the first half. Yeah, I mean, I thought they were dead in the water. Started not even to watch the second half, and then I thought, well, what the heck. And just when they came out and looked like a totally different team, and Mahomes was just like, man, I'm like, how how does this guy do this? And I, and he even ran a couple, you mm-hmm. know, a couple of nice runs there on that ankle, and I'm like, wow. So, you know, it's just one of those things people are going to remember for a long time. I mean, a player that's committed, that wants to win, Man, that's why we all watch the game, right? Watch for guys like that to do that sort of thing. That's, that's I was going to say, Phil. That's that's he's right, but Phil, when you and Mike, that straight it was a straight line run. That's why he was able to do. He wasn't doing the zig and zag cutting, but that straight. But you could tell he was in pain. Yeah, and I, Matt, I've never had any kind of injection. It would seem to me that if it deadens you down there, you'd be like running wonky or something. I, I don't, I don't know how that works, but. Clearly, they did something to him. Yeah, he was bouncing around better in the second half than he did in the first half. So, but uh, I mean that that turnover. Phil was talking about it when 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 Jalen Hurts just kind of fumbled the ball and uh, the the Chiefs number thirty two picked it up and ran it in. That that was kind of the momentum I thought when Kansas City was like, all right, if we can get some more snaps because Philly did such a good job of not giving Kansas City opportunities. Right, and. Again, you come out in the second half and your offense is working and you just take charge. I mean, it was it was a fun game to watch. I mean, it comes down to that call and people are mad about it. Yeah, it was, it was probably pass interference. Yes, it could have been overlooked. I don't know that you expect somebody, to, a, a ref, to go, oh, it's late in the game. I don't want to decide the game, so I won't call it. it you know, it could have gone either way. You still had pressure on that that field goal. Yeah, it was a short field goal, but man, I wouldn't want to be a guy in that situation. And he had I, missed yeah. a, and he'd missed one earlier, so you know it's in the back of his mind. Sure. So it wasn't just a dud ending. There was some suspense there, you know, before it went through. I mean, it was amazing though that Philly that generated what was it seventy sacks up until the Super Bowl got nothing, and really, I mean, not all really that much pressure either. Uh, just. I did not expect Kansas City to be able to completely negate the thing that makes Philadelphia's defense so special. And I thought that their pass rush would be the difference. It turned out it was the difference, just in the other direction. Yeah, big surprise. Again, if you had asked me before the game, I would have said, well, I know Mahomes is hobbled. He's not 100%. I think that's going to be the difference in the game. Plus, I went in thinking Philadelphia is probably a somewhat be- a little bit better team anyway. So, and it was a surprise for me. Mike, what'd you make of uh, Arkansas's loss to Mississippi State on Saturday? Well, I mean, you know, there's all this stuff going out there that you you introduced a new 
factor into the lineup and you messed up the chemistry and you're not going to get those people to back off from what they believe. I, I can't say that didn't have an effect, but it sure, sure didn't affect you know, Anthony Black. He had 23 points and, you know, five five block shots, five boards, I think three steals. He, he played his tail off. I think there was some frustration on his part, but not directed toward Nick Smith Jr. He got mad at Walsh at one point on a turnover. Um, I just think you could, if you went back and looked at what's happening with Mississippi State, you know, one of the top defensive teams in the country, and then they've been getting better offensively, you maybe could have seen that coming. I think a little bit of it is you have that big road win, you think you've turned the corner, and even if you're being reminded every day the rest of the week, hey, you know, don't don't let this go to your head, I think there's a psychological thing there. To me, the, the league is better a little bit top to bottom than it was last year. In other words, there's teams down at the – there's so many teams that can beat you now, uh, and maybe more so than last year. I tried to look at the difference between this team and last year's team. Last year they didn't dig themselves as big a hole. I think they were 8-4 and four at this point instead of 6-6. Six and six. Um, The scoring was about the same last year, maybe even a little bit. uh, This year, maybe a little bit better defensively, but maybe just more maturity last year on the players that you really have to count on. Um, When I look at this team a year from now, if you know if Brazil comes back and the Mitchell's brothers come back, and you got Walsh back, and you bring in two more five stars and, and. one of them's a, a kind of a true point guard that's not 6'8", he's like 6'4". Uh, maybe you end up with a better team on paper than than what this team is. This team just has seemed to have, and, and part of it is the two injuries. So if you just take that out of the mix, it makes a huge difference. Uh, I think the question is, and Musselman was asked, and he answered the question, he said, uh, how do you integrate him back in? He said, look, it, it's, it's going to be a challenge. You know, you got to, I don't know how he does it. I think you just kind of go with what, what you see. He played him more than I thought he would. 17 minutes, I think. Now what happens, you know, on the road, you know, in college station, do you play him 20 minutes, 22? Well, I'm sure it depends on how he plays. I, I, Mike, I thought uh, Nick Smith, I don't know how much of a hunter you are, but you go hunting and, and you got your dogs out there and, and, and you go hunting for about three or four hours and then you, you're pheasant hunting or dove hunting and you come back and you get you a little snack and you get to, you, you get the other dog that was sitting in the cage in the crate and then you get him out and you got to let him run it off for 20 minutes because he's so excited before you can actually go hunting. That's what Nick Smith looked like. He just looked like he was so excited to be out there. Not that he was that out of control, but he's just re- he just needs to he needs to understand the offense better. He needs to understand the deep. That's just what you miss when you don't play for uh, a month and a half. He's going to sure. be okay. If, I think he's going to be all right. I think it's a good move I mean, to play him now and, and get him going. Sure. And if he'd hit that shot late, the three-pointer that didn't go, I mean, man, people would have gone nuts. So, again, there's there's some pushback because of all the agent stuff and the one and done. A lot of fans are against that kind of stuff. But, you know, Muss is bringing in two more five-stars next year. This is a, this is a thing they're going to have to get used to. Uh, it's just the way it's done these days. And I think we got some fans that don't like that. They'd rather just have a guy that's maybe a high four-star, low five-star that they're going to have for three years and not have to contend with this stuff. But it, not every five-star has an agent issue or an injury that causes you to miss this many games. I mean, none of us really know the truth on that situation. Is it an injury? Is it just a soreness? What's going on with the agent? Uh, so it, anytime it's my experience that anytime you have a lack of information, real information, people just go with whatever they it just spreads. Oh, this happened, that happened. There's this more conspiracy theories. And that's why I'm always been a big believer in, you know, just, just lay it out there tell tell people what's going on, give them the truth. And then they don't have any way of speculating because you've just laid it out there. Well, I hope uh, with what you're saying, some recruits come in. I hope Jordan Walsh doesn't go anywhere because I I think Jordan Walsh can be a 10-year pro, but he needs three years of college. It's not about getting to the NBA first. It's about making the right decision and getting there at the right moment. And I think these NIL deals can help some of these players not be one and done and, and not think they have to go 
um, because he, he'll be a talented player for us next year as well. And then I think uh, Pinion and uh, Darian Ford, I think they're going to make some plays for us next year too. Sure. I mean, that's the way it traditionally was done. Nobody really expected freshmen to tear it up. But when a guy's a one and done, and you know as a fan that that's, this is probably it, you want them to just go out and, you know, wipe the floor up, with it, wipe the other team up, out, just tear it up every every night. And when you don't do it, they, they, it's like we're running out of time with this guy. I'm a, I mean, I've enjoyed watching Anthony Black so much because this guy does. He's committed. He's trying to hold this team together in so many different situations. And I just, it, it bothers me that we're not going to get to watch him next year or the year after. I, I asked myself, what would he be as a third-year guy? And I, I think we'll get to see Walsh, and I think you're going to see a big difference in him yes, next year. Yes. And if he stays two years, you're going to see a huge difference. You're already seeing a difference in Blake. He's not a freshman any longer. I mean, he's been he's running this team. I mean, it's February. I understand he's a freshman as far as college credits are concerned, but I think in the context of college basketball, I guess he hasn't played in the NCAA tournament, but that's it. So many coaches tell you by this time, you're not really a freshman any longer. Nick Smith is a freshman still in that same context. He just hasn't played enough basketball for this team to not be a freshman. And it's not a matter of like, oh, you know, big wide eyes playing in the SEC and big wide eyes going into, you know, the, you know, a road game at, at uh, you know, here or there, A&M coming up this week. It's just he hasn't played enough basketball. Um, and I don't know if he will play enough basketball, you know, to get to where we see him at his absolute best, which is what you were hoping he would have been playing at by now. Anthony Black is playing at his best right now. Yeah, and, and again, I mean, this, that's the big question. How much better, how, how quickly is it going to take Nick Smith Jr. to kind of really accelerate his game? We saw him right in that, Oh, the part he played in the Oklahoma game, by that point, he was really starting to look good. And then he was gone. So how quickly does is it, does it take two games, three games, four games? Well, he's got enough games left, I think, where he can hit the accelerator and really look good and, and make an impact, maybe by SEC tournament time, then into the NCAA tournament. So I think there's time. But the, the real issue is that's what everybody wants to see. Uh, that's sure what I want to see. I want to see how good he can be. Well, I, I think to, a little bit is he, he needs to kind of get that out of his mindset where it's like, how can I help this team win? It's it's not his team anymore at all. He he might be the most talented player, but you haven't been here, bro. You, you've been doing whatever you're doing. I, I, your knee's fine. The way you're jumping around out there, everybody else is playing hurt. And, and they've been playing the whole year. So you got to kind of come in and fit in and, and don't worry about it being – it's not your team. It, it's just not going to be. So you got to come in and be a, be a role player. Come in here and ask, what can I do? How can I help this team win? Because he is our most talented player. No no doubt about it, Nick Smith has the most upside. Now, you know I'm an Anthony Black fan, and I think Jordan Walsh is going to be able to play in the in the league for a while too. I just think he needs a couple, year, couple more years at Arkansas. Yeah, and again, but see, now what you're talking about with Nick Smith Jr. is what you just said is the way it needs to be. Okay, is that the way it's going to be? And I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if he's going to very quickly start trying to take over and push himself to be score 20, 25 points in a game. Is he going to be content to score 12 and, and, and you know, just get some assists? I don't know. It's, I don't know where this is headed. And right. I think that's... That's what Musselman meant when he said it's a dilemma right now as to how to bring him along. That's that's a good point. It's, it's like when you get a wide receiver and he's used to getting 10 to 11 passes a game and then you bring somebody else in and now he's getting three. And, and you're kind of like, well, what what? And so Nick Smith is used to being the guy. He, he's used to being that guy. Uh, and he is talented enough. And, and the thing, though, I loved his energy. I loved his enthusiasm. I, I loved how he went about it. And I think he's going to be okay. I'm glad he got to play against Mississippi State, one of the better defensive teams. I mean, they had a good defensive plan for us. You, you got to tip your hat to them. They were going under the screens. I would make – it's like when we played Auburn playing that court. I would make us shoot – if we can – if I would I would make us shoot 43s a game if I'm playing against Arkansas. Mm-hmm. That's, what, that's just how – if y'all – if we hit them and, and we lose that way, okay. But we're too good at getting to the rim and, and attacking that way that I would just – that's how I would play play Arkansas if I was defending us. Sure, and, and but the, you know the interesting thing, Matt, is the five, opening five or six minutes of the game, Arkansas attacked that defense 
mm-hmm. and they did score inside. But here's what happens: it's you have to work so hard to to score inside against a team like that. You get psychologically, you start thinking, "Oh, hey, I'm open out mm-hmm. here. I'll take this it's shot." Less effort, and they you're sucker, right. they sucker you into that. Yep, you're right. Mike, we got to run up against the break here. I appreciate you. Thanks for uh, hopping on. And uh, next week, we'll we'll talk a little baseball, too. The baseball season starting this weekend. Sounds like fun. Thanks. Can't wait. Thanks, Mike. Bet Online remains your number one source for all your sports betting this season. Everything from the NFL and bowl season to esports. You'll find the latest odds, team matchup info, player news, and game trends at Bet Online. Bet Online features live betting, free contests, and live scores for almost any sport or game imaginable. We're the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite leagues and events. Head to betonline.ag to join and receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Make sure to use the promo code BELIEVE to receive your rewards. That's B L E A V. Bet Online, where the game starts.